you know what we need to do is we need to start carrying empty Gatorade bottles in this truck just for you I because know. someone's got to pee. I got to pee. <laughs> Tonight's menu is bacon wrapped scallops and filet mignon. Oh, and these sites are so unlevel. Like, look at that. Our tires are hanging. Two hours to go 18 miles. But I got the cutest puppy snuggles right now, so that's okay. <laughs> If you've watched us for a while, you know it's been a bit since we put out any kind of travel video. Yeah, it's been a really busy summer for us. Things like buying a new cabin, designing a new RV. <laughs> We've been going to RV shows and rallies. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys, that puts our travel videos pushed back even more so than they already normally are. And a lot of you know, they're already pushed back quite a bit because we do the how-to stuff and the techie stuff. With all that being said, we're gonna go back in time <laughs> to the beginning of 2022, where we balanced between two of our favorite mooch docking locations with our friends in Florida. But first, a quick recap on what's happened between Angel Fire, New Mexico and Florida. It's a lot. Let's go. While we were in New Mexico, we went down to the Balloon Fiesta and had a blast. Then we headed from New Mexico all the way to Elkhart, Indiana to do some preliminary work with Grand Design in that new Momentum floor plan. After that, we headed to Ohio to spend some holiday time with family. We spent the first two weeks at a campground called Tomorrow Stars in Springfield, Ohio, which is about 45 minutes from my family, which kind of stinks, but my brother decided to sell his house, you know, the place where we would mooch dock in the driveway. So there are no RV parks anywhere close to where my family lives, unfortunately. It's fine. It's just a campground kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it is right off the interstate. So it's easy access. And a lot of full timers live here. So that's why there's quite a few people here. We are moving to a place that's maybe 15 minutes closer, about 30 minutes to get to my family. And it's actually an RV park inside of Kings Island Amusement Park and it's pretty pricey and this time of year of course the park's not open and we don't get to enjoy all the amenities the pool and all that stuff but we're still going to check it out Daisy is not enjoying sweater weather hey Daisy tell him you don't like it she's thrilled It's really cold out here. It's really cold. The sun's shining, but it's really cold. And I don't understand. These sites are so unlevel. Like, look at that. Our tires are hanging. I did not expect that a brand new campground that's super expensive to be so unlevel. This isn't good. It looks like it's a nice day outside, right? Cause it's sunny. The thing about Ohio weather that I was trying to tell Chad about is that usually when the sun's out in the winter time, that means it's really cold. We had Thanksgiving with family. Was my singing, oh, I was overshadowing Adele. I couldn't tell if it was you or Adele. I know. We spent some time exploring some antique malls. We went to Winterfest at Kings Island. We're at Winterfest. That's right, it's Winterfest at Kings Island in Mason, Ohio. When the snow falls outside, you can hold
Tara Fowl busted her head, got a concussion. <laughs> up for a few weeks no filming occurred because of it and after that we packed up headed to North Carolina for Christmas some family members got COVID so Christmas was canceled then Chad had hernia surgery don't forget to like and subscribe what? <laughs> <laughs> smash that like button smash it smash it I love you after some recovery time we then packed it back up and we finally headed to Florida. It's really cold. What do you say we get out of here? Took two days to get there, made a stop where we always stay on this route, which is I-75 RV Park. and then made it to Dade City, Florida. Finally. First stop was with our friends near Dade City, Florida, and you've seen us here before. Mm -hmm. This was our second time mooch docking at our friends, Norm and Heather. Wow, you're doing great. I mean, I said that like I was surprised, but I'm not. It's so confusing when I don't know what I'm doing. You had it, I get so twisted around. They've got a great setup there with water and electric, but no sewer. We always monitor our utilities and pay for what we use, and we also give them some extra to go out to dinner. I was still feeling off from my TBI and struggling with work, and we weren't really doing much of anything, but we did make it to the Florida RV Super Show. This is the big money, folks, right here. Big money. It's cold. January 20, I think 9th or something, and we're in Florida, and the feels like temp is 43. It's just dumb. Gloves, hats, oh, jackets, layers. <laughs> Not what you expect. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was in the 60s, but 40s is, it's pretty tough. We're walking down to downtown Dade City for the Kumquat Festival. Yeah. I've never been to a Kumquat Festival. Neither have I. I used to eat them as kids, get them off the bushes and stuff. They look like mini oranges or something. Yeah. I think they're tart, <laughs> but I think that they make jams and pies and stuff so uh, maybe we'll just walk down there get some snacks and turn around yeah i don't know the kumquat festival is an annual free event with over 300 vendors crafts farmers markets food and beverage Licorice guy is popular. Do you want some licorice? Oh, well, maybe. I like licorice. <laughs> There's a whole nother street that way and that way with vendors. The festival is held on the streets in downtown Dade City. There was a quilt show around the fountain of the historic courthouse. There was also a car and truck show. And lots of kumquat products, including the famous kumquat pie. That's a nice onesie you have there. You like that? <laughs> Today's the day for it. Made it to the end of the street. Of one street. There's like three or four more streets to go to the end of. It's true. We are heading down to the Keys, and we could probably do this trip in one full day, but we decided to break it up into two to make it a little bit easier for us. We're currently going zero miles per hour because there's an accident. After being in the truck for seven hours. And we're in kind of a position where there's nothing to the west. The navigation couldn't really navigate us around it. 
because that would take us all the way into like Miami traffic and that would be worse. So we thought, <laughs> we're only 18 miles away from our overnight harvest host. Yeah. 1.8 miles to our destination of the Flying J or Pilot or whatever. Yeah, but so right now the GPS says we won't get to the Harvest Host until 7.23 p.m. It is now 5.13. Two hours to go 18 miles. But I got the cutest puppy snuggles right now, so that's okay. <laughs> Get stressed out, hug a puppy. We've gone 0.2 miles in the last half hour. Good times. It's 5.43. We are going 10 miles an hour now. That's pretty good. Oh, yes. You know what we need to do is we need to start carrying empty Gatorade bottles in this truck just for you because someone's got to pee. I got to pee. Again. And last time we had a Mountain Dew bottle, but this time we have cans. And that's cans. not going to work. And so I'm going to let them go ahead and go in this coffee mug. I mean, you're in a sterile, right? I think I saw you hop out here and pee real fast. No, oh my gosh, no. So I would, I would use the door. No. Uh, I would stand like this. No, veto. <laughs> veto. Technically, there's nothing she could do about it. I could just jump out and pee. But I would have to deal with the aftermath. <laughs> All right, anyway. Wasn't that fun? Yeah, that's fun. Did we mention that we're going to a harvest house? I don't know if we did. HH. <laughs> I'm a little tired. <laughs> It's been a while since we've been to a harvest home, so this is fun. So we're 5.8 miles away. We're going to get there shortly after sunset. What's, what's the name of There's the There's no name. It just says fence and west. We're going west now. Told so that would have been this grassy road thing he's talking about. Okay, so it's coming up. So I see some RVs. Okay. It's not this. It might. It, yeah, it, I think it is. It, I think it, it is. is. Go around, yep, right? Yeah, it is. And then we're going to take a right where the track. Oh, okay. this is great. Okay, let's see. You want me to get out, babe? No, we're just going to have to haul this through it. It's a grass road. I'm assuming it's this right here. Because that's where the RVs are. Yeah. You're okay. Are you sure? Yep, yeah, we have a... Well, yeah, yeah, you got a foot. Uh, maybe we just go all the way in front. I think they're pulling, they're pulling Oh, that's out. nice. That's nice. Thank you. This whole row was filled with RVs all along here last night. So I wonder if a lot of people are going to the Keys or coming back from the Keys. The main downfall to this location is just this busy road right here. And there's a little market store right there. Also, another downside to this location is we had to go through mud. See that? That's one dirty We gotta go back out through mud. And we gotta go back out through mud. We'll get the other side by this time. Yeah, now it'll balance out. See, it's all mud. We have to uh, fix that piece of trim. You do? You know that one that fell? Yeah. We gotta fix it before we go, so it doesn't fall off. A little repair action before we are able to hit the road again. Yep. When I hammered those nails in for our Christmas lights. Oh, yeah. So what's going on is that that big piece of trim is loose now. So Chad's going to secure it before we get back on the road. Cause I'll show you. He'll show us. Uh-huh. It's been four years. We've never had anything like that happen. We hung Christmas lights and stuff up there this year, and he thinks that might have... Oh, I see. Look what he does. Look at this. Look, I mean, you guys, please help me tell him not to do that anymore. Since there's no way out of here at the end of this road, Chad's going to have to back this up and then go out, put the back end that way, and then we'll head out that way. It pays to have these, I think, you can use your cell phone too, but if you're in an area where you don't have cell, good cell reception, please. 
I'm trying to film and walk backwards at the same time. I'll do some blinker checks on my way back. <laughs> Look at us multitasking. Left. Right. Reverse. All right, the back end is about at the dumpster right now. There's a dip right there, love. I gotta, I gotta make a do-over because I'm getting into the uh, stuff over here. Yeah, I think I told you to start cutting a little too soon. No, I did that on all my own. Dude, I was trying to take the blame. Just got to cut a little sooner, make it more gradual. And there also appears to be softer ground and a slight dip in front of the dumpster, so just keep that in mind. All right, we're good. Okay, well, stop coming back at me. <laughs> good job, babe. Good job, Daisy. Even on an overnight, always check your checklist. the big bridge that goes over to the keys. So pretty. It's 82 outside. It's good to be back. By the sea where secrets deepen Why my cry Just a little pee stop. This is what I'm talking about, right here. Ah. We made it to Big Pine Key and we got all hooked up at our friend's house, Sean and Kathy, and they have full hookups and it is pretty awesome. I assume you're gonna pull past? Yeah. You see that big snake behind you, right? Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> to you. To me? <laughs> to you. And to them. And to you guys. By the time you see it, it'll be like 4th of July. <laughs> or maybe um, uh, Labor Day? I don't know. <laughs> or maybe Valentine's Day 2023. You never know with us, guys. <laughs> we have been in the Keys now for over a week. Yeah. And we probably haven't shown you anything yet. <laughs> but... You we've know, just been working. You know what? We've just been moving and going slow. And that's okay because we are down here for a little while. And we know that. We have wonderful friends. Thank you, Kathy and Sean, for letting us mooch dock at your house. Absolutely. Full hookups in the keys. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Today we are going to the Truman's Little White House, which I'm excited to go in and, and check out. And the chat's going to make me something special for dinner. That's right. Oh my gosh, this is the busiest I've ever seen it on a weekday afternoon. I feel like it's a Saturday. Like, look at this. This is this is crazy. <laughs> this is a this is a Monday, people. <laughs> this is by far the busiest winter that they've had in a very long time. I think um, probably COVID related. We always like to park in the same spot with the big truck because it's really difficult, right, to find parking in Key West. The streets mm -hmm. are tight and the parking's tight. So we have found that the parking lot near Mallory Square is usually pretty good. You have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. There's an app for that. There's an app. It's super convenient. And I don't know why, but there's always a couple of spots there. Just drive around till one opens up. Yeah. And of course we were hungry and we didn't want to wander around and waste too much time. And right there by the parking lot is Maison de Pepe's. And we've never eaten there before, but we've been by it so many times. And it was really fun. And just like a lot of places in Key West, there were beautiful roosters all over the place. Yeah, running in between your legs and the table. Yeah. <laughs> After we ate lunch, we walked towards Truman's White House. 
On the way there, we've passed through the Key West Historic Memorial Sculpture Garden. We'd never seen that before. No. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. <laughs> I have no Good idea. Old Norberg. You know, Norberg. The Sculpture Garden opened on September 27th, 1997. It originally featured 39 bronze busts of the men and women who have had the greatest impact on Key West. Within this garden are busts of Ernest Hemingway, Asa Tift, Harry S. Truman, and several others. Stuck in your blue eyes, holding my hand tight. I could feel your palm in mine half the time. Stuck in There's actually a free section too of the Truman White House. So if you don't want to take the tour, you can just go in and there's a few exhibits that you can walk around and see and a little video that you can watch and a little gift shop. Mm, lots of patriotic stuff. Freedom and ice cream for all in Key West. <laughs> <laughs> This thing was actually a submarine base until 1974, which to me is kind of weird because I don't know how you get a submarine up to Key West with all the coral reefs and stuff there. This part of the naval operations was shut down in 1974 for 12 years. In 1986, the government sold 30 acres of the land and a local developer paid 17 million for it. Welcome to the True Little White House. My name is Kurt and I'm going to be your tour guide. Now this particular building got built in 1890 by the United States Navy. It was a beautiful waterfront home. The seawall was not far from where we are right now until the early 1940s. In the early 1940s, the Navy expanded their submarine base here and they needed more office space. So they built that structure right there in 1942. That was the Naval Administration Building. This is the view President Truman had when he arrived here in 1946. If you look at Harry Truman's life, for the first 50 years, he was just one of us. In 1917, at the age of 33, he re-enlisted in the National Guard because of World War I. He was sent to France. He achieved the rank as an artillery captain. Franklin Roosevelt wins his fourth term. But little did they know, 83 days into that term, Franklin Roosevelt would suddenly die, and Harry S. Truman would be thrust into the presidency of the United States, I would say one of the most difficult times in our history. He spent 175 days of his presidency running the country from this location. He returns to Key West five more times as an ex-president, and in true Truman fashion, he never stayed here. He said he was no longer an employee of the government, and he should not be staying on the government's dime. These two rooms that we're in right now didn't exist in the form they are today. They had to push out the walls. They put in a beautiful sitting area over here. They added the bar, and above us, they put a beautiful sun deck for the Trumans to enjoy. The Navy also knew that the president loved to play poker. So as a gift to the president, in the spring of 1949, they built him this poker table right here in the wood shop at the Naval Base. It's made out of four layers of Key West mahogany. It has built-in chip holders. Even back then, the Navy was recycling because these ashtrays are made out of three-inch 50 caliber shell. <laughs> they were pretty sure if people found out the president was playing poker, even though they were low-stakes games, that would be considered a sin. And when the president was done playing cards in the evening with his staff members, they would place this right over top of that poker table. And if you came in here any other time, you'd have no clue there was a poker table here. In 1961, President John Kennedy came to this house, sat at this table with the Prime Minister of Britain to discuss the Civil War in Laos. That poster is the USS Williamsburg. That was the presidential yacht in service at the time of Truman's term in office. That ship for its time had the most sophisticated wireless communications you could have. The president could pick up any phone in the house that was hardwired to the communications room on that vessel, and they could put him in contact with anyone he wished to speak to. 
in the country or around the world. As you leave this room, you will enter the dining room. The room looks nearly identical to the way it looked back then. And in that room at that dining room table, they created what became known as the Key West Accord. That agreement allowed the Army and the Navy to keep a little bit of aircraft, but most importantly, the Navy got the hold on to the Marine Corps. When you go upstairs, you're gonna to get to the top of the stairs. There's a doorway slightly to your left open. Little phone room with the soundproof stuff. When President Truman was here, it was a bedroom. Today, it looks like a press conference room. When you go in that room, I want you to look at two photos. He's playing an upright piano at the National Press Club in DC. He's there to entertain service members. There's a young actress there to help him. Her name is Lauren Bacall. They hoist her up, she leans back, and they snap a photo, and what a beautiful photo it is. When you exit that room, you're gonna go down a little hallway to a set of stairs that's gonna bring you back to the living room. At the top of the staircase is the final photograph of President Truman here in Key West. It was his 16th and final visit. It was taken outside where the tour started. He's 85 years old in that photograph. He lives two years and seven months after that photo was taken. He dies on December 26, 1972 at the age of 88. On behalf of the Truman Foundation, Historic Tours of America, myself, I wanna thank each and every one of you for coming. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Did you like it? That was really cool. I, I, like, I enjoyed cool. that more than I thought I would. I like the history stuff. I wish it could be like this forever. I think it's her riding that thing. Our friends told us about this market. What is it, about eight minutes from their house? Yeah. Called Murray's Market, and they have great meats. Fresh. And and Chad's making me Valentine's dinner. Hopefully they're... Hopefully they have scallops. <laughs> Otherwise, we're having something else. Hopefully they have some, <laughs> some good meat and stuff still left. <laughs> Murray's Market focuses on cows. <laughs> <laughs> and so we came down the street uh, about a half a mile to Tonio's Seafood Market, and we're going to see if they have scallops here. They were all out of cow scallops. They, yeah. Don't know where I'm going, but I'm on my way. I just want to stay right here. Keep everything the same right here. I wish it could be like this forever. My favorite part about having the griddle on the slide out tray is Chad likes to cook on it. Tonight's menu is bacon wrapped scallops and filet mignon. That's pretty genius. Finished product, looks so good. We actually get to stay in the Keys for well over a month this time, which was awesome. Thank you, Sean and Kathy. Mm -hmm. And we continue to do more things we've never done before, like we take a charter out for some fishing. That was a blast. Yeah. <laughs> We also go on a ghost hunt. I, I